Good evening and welcome to another episode of Old Fiddle's New Life. Um, I'm just going to do a very short one here this evening. Um, I'm working with my old German Strad. Um, this is the instrument that I completely redid. I mean, it was really had a, <laughs> did a lot of work on it, inclu including replacing a corner that uh, one of the one of the corners was just broken right out, and I replaced that. Anyway, the long and the short of it is, um, not long ago, um, I was not being careful, and I was uh, tuning up. And uh, as I tuned up, what happened was that the I was not watching the bridge closely enough, and the bridge fell, and it went just came down with a mighty pop. And you, you, I think I mentioned this back when it happened. And uh, anyway, uh, when that happens, uh, you had you had to take the chance of actually splitting the top of the instrument because it's the 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 bridge has. 14 pounds per square inch of pressure going down onto the top of the instrument. So anyway, I got it all set back up. I I've, uh, had a problem with uh, getting getting my pegs to sit right so that I could get my tuning back up to pitch. And I was using uh, the Hills Peg Dope. I, I think I mentioned did a whole video on this. I hate that stuff. Uh, but uh, what, since then, I was able to go ahead and order this old standby that I've been using for a lot of years. And uh, I had run out of it and actually lost the bottle. Let me take it out. It comes, now let me turn this around. I'm just going to show you this. Uh, because this, if you can get a hold of this stuff, it is really, really good uh, for getting, for treating the pegs and uh, getting them to actually begin to grip and be able to tune up your instrument. So let me turn this around and let me show you what we're talking about. And then we'll go on just a little bit longer. Uh, my battery's running down, so I want to get this over with. It's called uh, the Original Ardsley Peg Drops. This stuff works. They're liquid peg drops, and they come... Let me just take, take this out. Come in this little bottle like that with a nice little squeezy... Uh, you know, with a little, just a little opening in the end so that you just put a little bit on each one of the pegs um, on the outside of the cheek. Uh, sometimes you do it on the inside of the cheek. It depends on what stage you're at in, in uh, resetting your instrument. But Ardsley Peg Drops. Um, and uh, it took me, I think, two or three applications of this. In other words, uh, put it put it on, and then, uh, you know, rock your pegs, rock your pegs back and forth um in in the cheek and and let it sit come back another day later do another one by the time you get to your third one your everything's taking in other words they're, they're the um the pegs are have enough traction in the peg hole to be able to hold the pitch and uh i just the as i had done that and got everything set back up i <laughs> you talk about a beginner's mistake this bridge was backwards. That is supposed to be facing the back of the instrument. And then if you look at the at the peg at the um, at the uh, bridge, there's a curve, and that curve is supposed to curve backward with a flat toward the back. And the name of the the name of the uh, bridge maker uh, toward the back of the instrument. That was completely the other way around. And I was playing tonight. And all of a sudden, I said, wait a minute, what's it? <laughs> so I went to the hassle of taking the, taking the pressure down, in other words, loosening the strings and putting the bridge back on and, uh, and resetting everything. And I'm now almost to pitch. Uh, well, here, let's do this right. Oh, yeah, it's, it's pitchy. I, I got to tune it up some more. Uh, you know, it's not not all the way full up to pitch, but uh, it'll get it because, like I said, these these um, pegs have been administered with the Arsley peg drops, and um, I don't think I'm going to have to do another application. I just need to you know slowly tune this back up. But anyway, just just a word of um, of caution to when if you're tuning up your instrument, be very careful to watch and make sure that you're as you're tuning because you're tightening that this the top of the bridge is not pitching forward and once because it once it gets past a certain point it's going to come down and that could be very dangerous for the top of your instrument uh one of the ways i noticed that i had a problem was not just the fact that the 
the uh, the uh, name of the uh, bridge maker was toward the back, wasn't toward the back, but the, uh, the the feet of the bridge were not fitting properly to the top of the instrument. As soon as they turn it around, they fit very precisely because uh, that's the way I cut it. So anyway, <laughs> just a word of a word of caution. Um, just be careful when you're when you're tuning your instrument up that you're you know keep track of where the bridge is at. Make sure that it's um, that it's staying straight. Let me uh, do this and see if I can do this. It, when you, when you're getting getting ready to, and I think I can hold it just like this. Okay, when you're doing this, you want to brace from both sides. If you you know if it starts to pitch forward from both sides, you grab hold with your thumb and your in your uh, middle finger, and use your your index finger uh, to pull back. Let me see if I can show you here. The illustration I'm about to show you here, um, the the uh, bridge is braced, the foot of the bridge is braced both E side and G side between your thumb in the back and your middle finger in the front. And then you use your index finger to, to pull gently back. And when, when these, when your strings are under full pressure, it's, it's kind of a dangerous time. You don't want the thing to fall. So you just, if it is pitched forward at all, you go ahead and brace it like it's, you see in the illustration, using your, your index finger to gently pull back until you feel it's just perfectly upright. And you should be able to tell that just by looking at the feet when they come completely flush down on the surface of the instrument. All right, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Um, so, all right, well, there's the illustration. illustrate this when I did this um, and I just recommend that you do it the same way obviously I mean it, you know you want all the pressure off from your strings you can probably leave them in uh, but but uh, and by the way if you have the strings off it's even better but the point is what you're gonna do and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take the cap off I'm not gonna take the cap off this what what you're gonna do is is put put a drop pull the peg back slightly in other words, like you're pulling it out of the peg box, but don't, you know, just a little bit. And then just put a drop. And don't go over on the other side. I'm right in my own light here. And put a drop on, on the, the tapered end of the peg. And and then, uh, you know, just tilt it enough to where the, the, you can see that the, the uh, liquid has gone inside, you know, has siphoned down around and gone onto the inside of the peg box. Oops. Shh, quiet, <laughs> and and then uh, have some tissue on him. You don't want to have any excess, you know, staying on the outside of the cheeks. It probably wouldn't hurt it, but the point is, I always, you know, have a little tissue on hand and and, and uh, sop it up quickly. And but anyway, and make sure is is you've gotten that liquid to go to the inside of the peg box, you know, to in to inside the cheek on both sides, okay, on both your your fat side and your tapered side. And, and then what you're going to do is just rock it, rock it back and forth, rock it back and forth. And you're working that liquid into the inside, into the into the relationship between the peg and the inside of the cheek uh, on both the E and the G side of the, the uh, peg box. And uh, you do that on all four pegs and then just let it sit. And uh, this, this is the way I do it, okay? Just let, let it sit for a day and uh, just give your... Give your violin a, t a day off, and then uh, come back the next day and see if it's it's doing a good job. Uh, you know, keeping its grip as you're trying to tune it up. If it is, you probably only need one one uh, uh, application of the peg drops. If not, uh, then do another application. And uh, it, like I said, by the third day, what you're doing is revitalizing the inside of the the cheeks and and the the relationship between the peg and the cheeks and um uh, like i said after three applications i was good to go and uh and everything was back up and running again and i had um i was able to get my violin up to full pitch and i've been playing for the last two nights and had a wonderful time just to wait till my wife has gone to bed not that she can't hear it or whatever and by the way she can't hear it in our bedroom <laughs> because uh, it's way up in the other corner of the house. But just, uh, 
just go ahead and you know it's my recommendation you know not everybody uses the same stuff but i really like the the old ardsley peg drops i've been using them for many many years and uh, uh they just really really work it's good stuff all right thanks okay well one last comment as we get ready to wrap up this episode uh, one well the reason that uh, i've been experiencing this problem with the pegs is um that i my man cave which is where i love to keep my my fiddle because it's close by and i can just pick it up and play it when i want to pick it up but um I, I, my man cave is literally right next to the furnace room down in the basement and i keep it nice and warm in there all winter long <laughs> which is lovely for for relaxing and watching tv and so forth but it's not the best environment for my fiddle um and uh e even with the case closed it gets very dry very warm in there and of course that's just not a good scenario for uh the pegs drying out and slipping and so forth and that's one of the reasons that i really love the arsley peg drops and I, this is not an advertisement this is just me i mean <laughs> i just i've been using it a lot of years and i found it it's it just really works well so listen i hope you've enjoyed this um episode of old fiddles new life and i uh, hope you come back again um i don't get these out very often but i i this came up where i i, I got some i got a fresh bottle of this stuff and I really needed to, to get my fiddle back up and playing again. And, and so we just did this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye.